Welcome to Letham St Mark's and our online service. Thank you so much for joining us again and we pray that the moments that we spend together will be fruitful and helpful to you in our following of Jesus and our worship of Almighty God. You know, we have seen so many changes in our lifetime. Even in the lifetime of our children, we have seen incredible changes. And one of the things that seems to be highlighted more than anything is the way in which advertising, the way in which um, products are sold to us. And they're sold to us in such a way that we then become the centre of the world who needs the product that's been sold. And you see that mirrored in all sorts of different ways, right down to the selfie culture, right round to the fact that lots of people are so insecure today that they think the way out of insecurity to find security is to constantly pour so much attention, effort, time, money, resources, everything in to try and resolve issues for ourselves. And actually, psychologists will tell us it only makes the insecurity wor worse. So what are we to say about this? Well, we're looking at a passage today where the disciples, some of them said, well, you know, we're trying to work out who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And really we're going to the heart and the essence of following Jesus. Not about the outward stuff that everyone sees, but what's going on in with our hearts. The whole battle of pride versus humility. So I'll be back later on to talk about that message and we'll have different readings to help us with this. And so we look forward to that. And we have Psalm 131 to kick us off. I'll see you later. Enjoy the service. Psalm 131. Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have calmed and quieted myself, like a weaned child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, now and always.
same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Father, thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest and most recent uncertain times where many have recently found themselves facing huge battles, suffering from physical or mental health challenges, bereavement or significant financial worries. Yet we have so much to be grateful for, Lord. Shine your light in us, through us and over us to help us recognise what we have got to be grateful for. The joy of opening our eyes to a fresh day where your mercies are new every morning. Help us love the life we live right now. Show us the good things we often overlook and help us to be content with what we have. Forgive us when we compare ourselves to others. Forgive us for longing for things outside of you and your kingdom. Thank you for loving us right where we are, right as we are, and help us keep our eyes on you. Let us take a few moments to think about what we are grateful for today. Lord, help us not to judge others in their decisions as we come out of this unprecedented lockdown. And we pray for the leaders of the country as they make difficult decisions. Renew our spirit, Lord. Fill us with your peace, and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. What a wonderful and faithful God you are. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh today. Hear our prayer. Amen.
be reading from Mark 9 verses 33 to 37. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he had placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Welcome back to your reflections on Mark's Gospel. Now, the, the situation with the disciples, which is so encouraging for us, is to constantly realise, as we have affirmed before, that they don't always get it right first time. In fact, it takes many bites at the cherry for them to actually work out what it means to be a follower of Jesus in certain situations. And the one that they are struggling with in our reading today, and also another reading in Mark chapter 10, is to do with what's going on inside their hearts and the way in which they view themselves and they want others to view them. And we're talking really about the inner life, that walk with God, that influence of his word and his spirit upon us that then produces the actions in our lives. And I guess it is the two roads, isn't it? The road of pride or the road of humility. Pride, of course, came into the world, the first sin, where Adam and Eve wanted to grasp knowledge and to be equal with God. And because of that, they were thrown out the garden of, of, of paradise. They lost their paradise. The garden of Eden was lost to them because they disobeyed God and thought that they, that they could technically become equal with God. And then all the way through, we see this ravaging, uh, decimating power of sin that is behind so much and all of the destruction in a perfect world. And yet within that, God is still working, still doing incredible things through you and through me. But it is a stark choice for us in how we live our lives. Is it all about putting ourselves at the centre of everything? Or is it about serving Christ, others, and then ourselves? And that is the battle. And I'm pleased to say that I am no expert in this. Uh, I have got this right and wrong on so many occasions. And actually, this side of, of paradise, the eternal paradise, I don't think anyone will know what it is to be fully at peace with regards to walking humbly with God. So let's look at the passage. Um, you've had it read to, to you, and there's, there's other passages as well that, that were thrown in there. And we're just so delighted that God's word is so honest and open with regards to this most important of issues. And we find it in the lives of the disciples. You can just imagine the situation in Mark chapter 9. Let me read a wee bit of it to you again. I love this. Um, what were you arguing about on the road? They didn't answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Remember Muhammad Ali shouting out, I am the greatest. And people self-proclaiming that they are the greatest in whatever field that they work in or live in. And they were trying to work out a pecking order for the disciples about which was the greatest. Jesus' heart must have just, wow, sank as he realised what it was they were truly arguing about. And of course, Jesus being Jesus tells them that this kingdom that he is bringing to the world is an upside down kingdom. And he says, whoever wants to be first must be last and be the servant of everyone. Then he took a little child, take him in his arms. Anyone who welcomes a little child on, on, as in my behalf welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes not only me but the one who sent me and so he is taking the pride of of the disciples he's turning on his head and and he's looking at the this little child and saying look this is what humility looks like in the kingdom of God someone who has that dependency um, upon God and that will run through the rest of the gospel and it will run through the teachings as well of Peter and of Paul of John of the the epistles that we read in the later part of the New Testament it's something that is so important because we are to walk humbly with God we are to know what it is to walk in humility with God so what does that look like in our daily lives well the disciples uh, were looking at Jesus and they saw in him someone who was the person that they'd given up their whole life to follow and there was a, a great sense of fame not that Jesus was seeking fame but that would go with it and there they were you know they're part of this 
uh, rabbi's school of, of, of disciples. And, you know, people are talking about it. There's probably a great buzz in and around Israel. His name is becoming far and wide well known. And they are part of that story. They are part of this great work of God. And because their own hearts have not really been sorted out before God in this important uh, area, but they would be, be, be assured of that. Their hearts would get sorted in this area. They were all trying to use uh, this fame to try and climb the ladder. They thought that this was a case of a succession up the ladder to be part of, you know, something that is like an inner circle, if you like. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about the, the Transfiguration, where uh, Peter and James and John were taken aside by Jesus, and they had a very special moment in their lives where they saw Jesus as he was in all his glory, and they were amazed at what they saw. They were given that. And, you know, part of what's going on now, I think, is a, a kind of carry-on from that, and in Mark chapter 10 is a definite carry-on, uh, where James and John were, were asking something of Jesus that was amazing. They wanted to be seated at his left hand and his right hand in glory. Um, and, and so Jesus wants to unpick all of this and he wants to unpick that in us as well because the question that's underlying all of this is why do we do what we do? And for whom do we do it? You know, are we doing it so that we can score points with God, with others? Or are we doing it really out of humility and service and gratefulness for what God has done for us through Christ, his death, his resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and also that amazing fellowship that we have with him here, where he is in our lives and he grants us his peace. He grants us his grace and he changes us so that we know what security is through faith in him. And the disciples, even though they had Jesus literally with them, were, were still trying to work all of this out. They, they weren't sure what it was to be a true follower of Jesus in that sense. And so there was this kind of egotistical battle. Now, I have to say as well as a man, um, yeah, there is a testosterone thing going on here. Um, there's a kind of elbows out thing going on here. And, you know, it's a hierarchical and it's very much a culture where men um, are, are in charge of everything. When you read about the, the women in scripture, you don't get that sense that that's what's important to them. And so men, maybe we just need to, to man up in a different sort of way and be aware of the fact that, you know, a lot of the time it's our maleness that gets in the way and wants us to be number one, wants us to be driven, wants us to always hit the mark. Now, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious. There's nothing wrong with doing well and, and want your family to prosper. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it's what we do with it. You know, back to the transfiguration, I wonder if James and John particularly came back from that and started waving their experience in front of everyone else who wasn't there. We are the greatest, they were saying. Come to that conclusion. And so in Mark chapter 10, they start to ask Jesus, when are we getting our, our kind of reward? Because you've obviously picked us out from the rest of them. And we're the ones that are going to sit in your left hand and your right hand when the kingdom of God comes and everyone sees it and it's all fully here. And again, Jesus' heart, I think, probably sank at that moment because what he is talking about here is reversing, literally reversing uh, the order in which uh, culture today and back then used to elevate the powerful, the strong, the rich, those who were decision makers, those who had much, those who were um, in positions of influence. Where he turns it around and he takes a child and he says, actually, you know, this is what it looks like to be great in the kingdom of God. To abandon yourself to God. To know that the world does not revolve around us. To know that the power of giving, really giving, of time, of talent, of money, that no one knows except you and God, that your left hand and your right hand don't even know what they're up to but that your service is not done to boost our ego, but is done quietly and with humility and offered to God in a way that actually only God knows. Now, how that cuts across, across culture today, where everything is celebrated, 
even the mediocre is celebrated in a way to try and boost people's confidence. But actually, it's only widening the gap from security to insecurity. Jesus said, it's when we give away that we receive. It's when we take up our cross, deny ourselves, that we find out who we truly are. It's completely the opposite of what people are being fed today through the media, where it is all about making ourselves the centre of the universe, not even the world, the whole universe. And yet that monster will always be hungry and we can feed it from morning, noon and night and it will never be satisfied. It just grows and grows and grows. But the kingdom of God is a place where Jesus comes, lays his hand on our shoulder, as he did with the disciples. And he would say, look guys, let me tell you how God really wants you to live and where you will find the reward of that living is in the security of knowing who you are before God and in God the place that you truly have. And that's why Jesus will challenge people to their very core and talk about their attitude towards everything, towards money, power, influence. And that's why he, he sought out the lame, the blind, the discarded. That's why when he was born, he came to shepherds, first of all, came to outsiders, people who were not part of the inner crowd and said, you matter, you're important. Such is the scope and the spectrum of God's love and kingdom that it is so welcoming that it challenges the culture, every culture around the world. And here's the thing. It's not just a denial of self, but it's almost an enthronement of Christ. We talk about that in a metaphorical way. Is God on the throne of your heart? And you know, that can get a bit twee at times, but there's something very powerful in there. It's asking that question behind the other question. For whom do we live? Why do we do it? And you see, being a Christian is about, and again, in a, in, in not in a literal sense, obviously, about taking ourselves off the throne of our lives and allowing Jesus to mm -hmm. ascend it, where he then is the one whom we serve. He becomes our all in all. And again, that's so countercultural. But it is the order of things that God wants people to know. And you know, it is the most liberating thing because placing ourselves in, 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 in Christ's hands in that way sees almost an automatic reordering of everything because we see things so differently. That which once was so precious, so meaningful, maybe isn't so precious or meaningful anymore. You know, those people who really aren't part of, of our kind of friendship group or people that we would stay away with because, you know, we mm -hmm. saw the world through all of it serving ourselves. Maybe they become the people for whom we pray and, and we want to reach out to with God's love in practical and real ways and with words of, of grace, salvation of the gospel of Jesus, what he has done for them. It is a transformational thing to, to, to have Christ enthroned in our hearts. And when someone says, so Jim, who is the greatest? The answer is Christ. He's the greatest. He is the champion of the world. He is the saviour of all humankind. And when we come to that realisation, we are in a place where security is eternal. Our feet are on a rock that will not be shaken and that we can let go of our egos, our power, our sense of needing to always be in control and watch God do what God does through the most weak, vulnerable, leaky vessels. And incidentally, that's you and me. So, who is the greatest? Jesus is the greatest. Whom do we serve? The one who is the greatest. Do we always accumulate it all for ourselves? No. We give that we will receive. And then we know, ultimately, what is the most precious things on earth. Those things which are eternal. So bless you. I hope you have a great week and these words are helpful to you. They're very challenging, but take time this week to pray them through, to read the passage again, and to ask God to show you, as he has shown me, areas in our lives where we need to be serious about humility and less worried about ourselves. God bless you, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.
Bye.